the world of open source is absolutely incredible. And to be honest, it kind of even goes without saying because so many of the tools that we live and depend on on a daily basis are open source tools. And if anyone has ever spent any time in an open source community, they'll quickly find that the people that are there are some of the most selfless and dedicated people around. An uncomfortable truth though, is that if a key element is removed from the open source equation, everything collapses and that's the role of the contributor. I know for a fact that Commissar as an open source tool has benefited tremendously from contributors who have dedicated time and effort to make the tool better. So we thought that the least that we could do is put some effort into making, uh, contributing to Commissar as easy and as frictionless as possible. And that's what we're gonna do today in this video. We're gonna head over to the Commissar GitHub repository have a look at the open issues, grab one, and see what the process of contributing that issue is from start to finish. I personally can't wait, let's jump in. Once you're on the Commissar GitHub repository, head over to the open issues. You'll probably notice that a lot of the issues have to do with adding resources to cloud providers. That's due to the fact that Commissar at the moment um, integrates with a few different cloud providers and there's still a large subset of resources that are missing. You'll probably notice that cloud providers have loads of resources. So even though we have a subset of open issues here, we'll probably continue adding more. And in this video, we're going to choose to add support for Amazon EFS. Okay, so once you've chosen your issue, you can clone the repository and get started. I've already cloned the repository locally and I'm working on a feature branch. As you can see, the content of the repo is here. The first step that we're gonna to want to do is add a configuration file so we can authenticate to our cloud provider. And that way, as we develop our code, we'll be able to check it as we go. As you can see here, I have my config.toml file filled in. I'm using environment variables. Remember that if you need help creating your configuration file, you can head over to the documentation. We've recently updated it with the instructions that you might need. Cool. Now that we are authenticated, we can go over and look at the code. I'm gonna be personally working in VS Code today. So since we're gonna be adding a resource to a provider, the first thing that we're gonna do is head over to the providers folder and choose the cloud provider that you're working in. So I'm working with AWS. Here you're gonna see a subset of the services that are already supported. Make sure to go through this list of services before you add your contribution because you don't want to uh, add a service that's already there. Inside each service, we'll add a file for all of the services that fall inside that umbrella. Say for example, EC2, you'll find uh, ACLs, instances, security, groups and such and the naming convention that we're following is to add the service in plural dot com cool so since we're going to be working with efs today i've already pre-created this folder and i've created the efs.go file first of all we'll declare package efs and then we will import the dependencies that we're going to need and this is where we get to the meat of the file because really what we want to do is we want to be able to fetch all of the resources and all the details that relate to all of the EFS file systems that we have in our AWS account. And we'll do that with uh, a function. Uh, all of the functions start with uh, a capital letter. The function takes two parameters. It takes context and provider client, and it returns a set of resources. We're going to load a variable config with the values of all of the EFS file systems that we have in our cloud provider. And the way for you to know which method to use is by having a look at the AWS CLI documentation because it's also built in Go and it's the easiest way to find out which method we're going to need. So in my case, I would need to describe the names of the file system. So what I typed in was EFS describe file systems and I can see it right here. So by going over here, you'll be able to find the specific name of the method that you're going to need. Once you have that, we're just defining the EFS client and the STS client, which we'll need a little bit later on. And we're also going to need the account ID. And here in this for loop, we're returning the output, making sure that we don't have a nil pointer. After that, we're going to start a for loop in which we're going to parse the describe file systems method, and we're going to extract the resource details and the tags. In the resource section, some of the values are static, others are given to us directly from the method that we're using, but others, on the other hand, we're going to have to build ourselves. AWS doesn't always provide the resource ARN for all services. 
and you will have to check to see if AWS provides it for the service that you're trying to add. In the case of EFS, it doesn't provide it by default, so we're gonna have to build it, and that's what we're doing here. Okay, and also once you've parsed your tags, we can move on to the next step, which is to do a pagination check. AWS, when we are fetching resources, sometimes will give them to us in batches. So we are going to run this if statement to make sure that we don't have any batches left. And if so, just return the values of the next batch and break the if statement if there are no more subsequent batches to be retrieved. After that, we are just gonna add some helpful logs to be printed out in the CLI, and then we're going to return the resources. And that's pretty much it for our resource file. Now what we're gonna to want to do is declare it in the cloud provider Go file. In our case, we'll head down to aws.go, and here, first of all, we'll add the provider, and down here in the list of supported services function, we're going to add the name of the folder, that we added and we're also going to add the name of the function. Okay, so here I am back in my terminal. Let's test it out. Before testing, make sure that you've saved. Okay, so now time to test it out. In order to do so, we're going to create a new package with our changes in it. So we're just going to simply pass in go build. Once you run the go build command, you'll be able to see the new binary that was created that contains the changes that you've added. Now you're going to be able to pass in the commissure start command which will take into account the configuration file that we've added at the beginning of the video. So let's go ahead and do that. As you can see, resources are being fetched in the background. Let's see what it looks like in the commissure dashboard. I'm heading over to localhost 3000. Okay, we're just gonna give it some time to fetch the resources. So I'm just gonna pause the video and we'll be back shortly. So it just took a few minutes, but we managed to fetch the resources that we have in our AWS account. And now if we go over and filter by service, we will hopefully be able to see, yeah, EFS. So let's apply the filter and we can see the demo EFS store that I previously created. And that's a good way of knowing that our code actually works. And there we have it, we're almost done. What we're gonna ask for you to do now is to head back over to the contributor guidelines and just have a quick look at the naming conventions that we'd ask for you to follow when you commit your code to your feature branch and you open up the pull request. Once you create the pull request, we'll try to get to it as quickly as possible and we'll share our comments if we have any and we'll merge to master as soon as possible. And just before we go, I wanted to say that if you did take some time out of your day to contribute a feature or to resolve an issue on the GitHub repository, I want to thank you because it really means a lot to us and we don't take it for granted. So please don't be a stranger, come onto the Discord server, join us there in the community where we'll be able to talk about the features that we're working on, the future of Commissar and how you can be a part of it. But that's it for me in this video. Thanks for being for watching. See you in the next one. Peace.